Since 2019, the Department of Homeland Security has been collecting DNA from migrants detained at the U.S. southern border. Mark Morgan, former acting commissioner of Customs and Border Protection, says at the beginning of the Trump administration, if migrants came to the border as a family, that was their passport into the country. Morgan appeared on the national desk back in June didn't take long for the migrants and the cartels to realize that and exploit that. What we saw in the Trump administration, that fake families were actually being formed, meaning kids, minors were actually being bought and sold and rented to form these fake families because, again, it was their automatic passport in the United States. What we did as soon as we learned that was to implement this rapid DNA testing as well as we put additional ICE agents there to conduct interviews. And what we saw was an enormous amount of fake families. We were essentially able to shut that down. DNA testing is still happening at the southern border, and it's being used to expand the FBI's genetic database. The DNA is being collected and then submitted to the FBI's combined DNA index system, also called CODIS. Originally, the system was limited to the DNA of convicted criminals. After more than a million new DNA profiles were added to CODIS last year, the FBI recently asked Congress for an additional $53 million in its 2024 budget in order to fund its DNA initiative. The Bureau says the increase in funding will help it to process the increasing number of DNA samples being collected by DHS. FBI Director Christopher Wray testified before a House Appropriations Subcommittee in April. But I can assure you that the, the sheer number of these DNA samples that we're processing, um, that CBP collects at the border, that we're then um, testing in order to uh, potentially solve any number of violent crimes. We're talking about sexual assaults, homicides. Uh, so this is important work. And often the DNA is the, the secret sauce. It's the critical piece that, that solves the crime. Uh, and the number has been going up significantly, significantly, which is why uh, we've made the request that we did. The growing genetic database is causing concern for civil liberties advocates. According to the ACLU's website, our DNA can reveal some of our most personal and private information. As genetic sequencing becomes faster and cheaper, there's a growing risk of that information being collected and used against us without consent. ICE agents aren't just collecting DNA samples from migrants. According to a report from The Guardian, the Intensive Supervision Appearance Program run on behalf of ICE by BI Incorporated keeps track of migrants through ankle monitors, smartwatch trackers, phone check-ins, or in-person visits. The program tracks at least 200,000 migrants and can store their personal data for up to 75 years. DHS is also learning about migrants' gang, cartel, and terrorism affiliations. However, DHS won't release that information, citing privacy concerns. The America First Legal Foundation is suing to have that information released, but DHS is fighting back. In a court filing from August, DHS says ICE properly withheld gang, cartel, and terrorist group affiliations of non-citizens under exemptions 7C because disclosure would invade non-citizens' personal privacy without any countervailing public interest. And now America First Legal Foundation is challenging that in court. In a counter motion filed earlier this month, AFO argues FOIA's privacy protections do not provide the same privacy rights for non-citizens as for citizens. AFL also argues that in particular, this information will allow the public to determine if these aliens present serious public safety risks based on their criminal activity. The AFL lawsuit marks the latest conflict for border enforcement advocates trying to extract information from the Biden administration on undocumented migrants being let out into America's interior. At Straight Arrow News, we help you cut through the noise and break free from the mainstream. How do we do that? By utilizing our Media Mist tool, we'll show you what the liberal and conservative outlets aren't reporting. To check it out, head to straightarrownews.com.